Hello and welcome to another episode of Citadel Guard Adventures. This is Beriathan of the Citadel Guard of Gondor. We are back in Vailavark and we need to continue the Ankmar Reborn storyline. But before we start with that, let me actually grab the daily. How might I aid you? Um, because we will be doing another instance really soon. So first of all, we need to talk to Luxithe. And she will tell us what she and her companions did inside Sagroth. You wish to hear the tale, eh? Well, I suppose I can grant you the privilege. Once my dear Igric returned from the east, our little group began hunting down those who still believed in the Iron Crown. We tracked one such fool named Garbadak in the sewers of Doom Bandrath, or Karndoom as it's otherwise known. Apparently, he sought to capture and tame a beast of some sort. Rumors of terrible monstrosities lurking beneath the city come and go, but last guide leans in for a conspirational whisper. I assure you, some of them have been very true. After all, why would the Iron Crown care about how their sorceries have poisoned the wildlife? She grins, then leans back. Garbadak may have been a fool, but anyone who perceives the world as something to be conquered is dangerous. The land does not forgive such arrogance, nor does it forget. And so, the six of us pursued him. Okay, so the, the the context of this quest is really interesting. Uh, what Laxide told us there, how the Iron Crown is corrupting the world uh, surrounding it. it. It was a really nice piece of dialogue. I, I like that a lot. And of course, we get the return of Igrig and Lukak. We have come a long way with these guys. Um, from Elder Slate all the way to Karn Doom. And, well, you know, I, I, I like them both a lot. Glad to see them back. But I, I'm missing a little bit more context. I mean, Igrik was in the East. Uh, we, we met her in Carbronak. She has already returned. But what is her relation with Laxide exactly? Who is Laxide? I, I think we are still missing a little bit of the story in here. And that goes to... The same goes for uh, the other things that we've been doing in, in the return to uh, current Doom. I think the the storyline that got more fleshed out is in the gears. We still have that mystery to resolve, of course. We also need to deal with Cranach and the Trey of Galorf. That has also been fully explained, but I, I'm missing a little bit more on some of the other things. But enough of that. Let us, before we listen to Laxite's tale, uh, let us grab all the other quests. Evil has returned to Kandu. After our adventures in the east, it is strange to see you here in my homeland, Breathan, but you are a welcome sight. Lukak chirps in affirmation. I am sure Laxite wishes to regale you with the tale of our expedition, so I will not keep you for long. But perhaps knowledge of the sewer's layout will allow you to appreciate her retelling more. She hands you a map that has been sketched in a careful hand. I traced our steps while we were down there. Laxite would never admit this, but she needed the help. Her sense of direction is atrocious. You may borrow the map until Laxite is finished with her retelling. Stay and hear me out. A fresh face. You must be Laxite's latest victim or will be soon. She usually saves her dramatic retellings for children, but even passing travelers will not be spared. The Sewer's expedition was not nearly as exciting as she makes it out to be. She completely skips over the boring bits as you would call them, for the sake of better pacing. Thus, she neglects to mention the filth we burnt along the way. The children ought to know that infection and plague is no love and matter. Make sure Laxai does not forget this either. May I speak with you? You are a traveler, no? Have you ever seen anything like this before? He procures a few files of viscous, violently green liquid. The Iron Crown did not maintain their sewers very well. We gather samples from there for further sign, but Eavair and Borgach, he notes to the two women nearby who are in deep discussion, are still figuring out how to break down and cleanse it. These impurities must be harming the land in the ways we do not understand. Laxite loves to recant our expedition, though she does not linger on the details. Stories spread by word of mouth can cover larger distances than we ourselves can travel. If she described the foul liquid to more travelers such as yourself, someone with new information might come forward and help us in our endeavors. Should you seek out, should you seek her out for the full account, make sure to remind her of this. 
Now, this is something that I also really like about this instance we're about to do, that we are not there ourselves. We are listening to Luxite telling how she and her group uh, went there and, and dealt with the problem, and we are just listening. So, it, in a way, it's very similar to... Uh, Mordor besieged in the Second Age and the Battle of Azanulbizar, we are telling about somebody else's story and we are witnessing it by playing it. So I, I, I really enjoy whenever the game uses this narrative device. Um, I, I, I enjoy it being a story within a story, basically. So we're going to learn right now what happened inside the Lair of Vermin. Down we traveled into the depths of the old sewers of Karn Doom. Okay, yeah, here we have Thaudisgar and the Lair of Vermin. Uh, I don't know, it's it's this one over here. We, we gotta check the map before we finish this instance. There we go. Years under the corruptive influence of the Iron Crown have poisoned the land. Leading to rumors of monstrosities lurking within Karn Doom's sewers. A sorcerer named Gavardach pursued these rumors for his own ambitious purposes. Little did he know, a group of Trev Duverdine has tracked him down, determined to put an end to his twisted aspirations. Alright, and here we have once again the deeds for Sakharov. So we have uh we have once again five items that we need to discover we have a slayer deed since this is a six man it, the amount is a little bit bigger 250 mobs uh we gotta complete this tier one tier two and tier three and where is the meta did ah here and the meta did of course so The thing is, with this instance, yeah, the summoning horn only appears when you advance a little bit, so I usually tend to forget it, but, um, no big deal. And here we have the first item we need to pick, the slimy sword. We have discovered a slimy sword. Does it have any description? We walk with purpose and don't stop until we are out of Ankmar, Kruin muttered under her breath. They walk towards the gate of Karn Doom, an invisible wall of stench affording them privacy from passers-by. Someone will stop us, Brax said. They'll know we are deserting. She scoffed. We smell like someone threw a bundle of hair into a privy and set it all on fire. No one will want to get near us. They remained silent until the gates of Karn Doom were well behind them. Where will we go, Brax asked. Anywhere but this doomed place. Oh, oh. This, the Sims, will be telling a really interesting story. We'd prepared for everything Garbadoc might throw at us. But we had not accounted for the smell. <laughs> it was ghastly. I even pitied the Angmarin's poor hounds. Yeah, I can imagine. This looks quite unpleasant, to say the least. <laughs> so, since this is the solo version, we really don't need to worry about a lot of stuff. We can once again chain pull a lot of these guys. And we should be fine. Now here we have the mapping point. The first one. Ah, okay. And the foul liquid as well. Now, oh, okay, this tiny vermin we can uh, pull to these guys in here. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, Luxite sometimes does that. If 
you want to chain pull, you gotta make sure you are grabbing aggro early so that she doesn't steal it from you. Here we have now the footprints. For a while, the two could hear nothing but the sound of their footsteps echo across the tunnel. What do you think Garbat expects to find here? Kruim asked, breaking the silence. Her companion shrugged. I do not know, he admitted. I kind of think with this other fill in my skull. Perhaps he seeks to use the stench itself. In an attempt to achieve some measure of Garbadak's grating affectation, she crossed her arms and wrinkled her nose. Kneel before me or I shall make you sting like a thousand rotten onions. Brack rolled his eyes. <laughs> I'm liking these two guys as well, Kruim and Brack. What a nice storyline, I hadn't really paid too much attention to it. Unexpected. Where are my soldiers? Did they fail to contain you? Kinda, yeah. If so, they deserved whatever end you gave them. I'll dispose of you myself and resume my search. You can tell, um... Garbadak does have a really similar uh, expression as the one described on the deep. So I think Kruim did a great job at getting Garbadak's smirk down. with you, Blackside, so continue with your story, please, and take a look at this. We got a... Oh, we got a really, a really nice cooking recipe. I don't have a cook myself, so maybe I can uh, do something else with the recipe. I don't know. Or maybe I finally take the time to level up a cook. They are quite useful. It's just that Leveling a cook is so tedious. I might need to do that. I am under the impression that we missed the the spongy the fluvia. I am not 100% sure, but I, 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 I seem to remember the spongy effluvia was inside one of these little huts. It's just that since I skipped most of them, I'm not 100% sure, but yeah, there you have it, the spongy effluvia. I knew it. We have discovered some spongy effluvia. Kroim sat on the driest patch of stone she could find and removed her left foot. Something wet and spongy slipped out when she upended it, looking like good custard and smelling like old meat, her prize for straying too close to some slug-like creature. I hate this place, she declared. Would you rather be at the glass house? asked Brack, a twig of a man with more sense in his head than muscle on his frame. He was a poor choice for a soldier, but the Iron Crown grew more desperate by the day. It's why they were in the sewer in the first place. <laughs> Okay, and then we, and then we get uh, the bit with the footprints. Uh, they are exploring the sewers. Theorizing about Garbadak's plan. Oh, come on. We have 
up another mapping point. Sticky puddle is up ahead, I believe. So I think I can maybe pull them with War Cry. Then when they are all grouped up, I can then use Resounding Challenge. That seems like a better plan. Yeah, there is a sticky paddle, but here we have a mapping point. Sticky Paddle, what comes next? Really intrigued by this story now. As Brack withdrew his sword from the Slug's corpse, long strings of effluvia clung to the blade. Flicking the sword did nothing to free it from the slime. He grimaced. Corian walked past, giving a wide berth to both him and the rapidly liquefying Slug. You could run the blade through the water, she suggested. I'm sure that would help. He eyed the stickly, stickly green water with due suspicion. I would sooner replace the sword entirely. <laughs> yeah, y you can tell uh, Kruim was just messing up with him. Now I want to learn more about those guys. I, I want a full Kruim plus Brack storyline, questline or whatever. That would be really nice. Right. Last mapping point. Right. Dark side still in my aggro. This is the last build, the last foul liquid, and here we have the soldier's corpse. You have found a corpse, we have completed the deed, the honor is now level 51. Let us see what we got. Somewhere deeper in the sewer system, they stumbled across what was left of Ogil. Much of the body had already been devoured by whatever foul fauna nested in this place, so much so that they had trouble identifying him. Brack stared at the wreckage of his once friend. We will die here, searching for a madman's prize. Kruim grabbed his wrist and pulled him back the way they came. No, she said, shaking. This whole city is falling to madness. I will not die with it. He wrenched his hand free from her grip. Then, what are you going to do? And we already have the answer. They tried to escape, at least. They discarded the sword that got, uh, that caused this sticky puddle, but we still don't know yet if they were able to escape or not. I hope they do, because I want to meet these guys now. And we have the title, Yarn Collector. You have found items of interest in the source of Karn Doom. And uh, here we have Garbadak as well. I was right. The simpletons who questioned me will rue this day. We could scarcely believe our eyes. What madness had led this beast here? A mixture of awe and terror settled in our stomachs as we slowly realized that we too would have to face it. I jest, I jest. The children enjoyed the flourishes I had to the story. But I cannot trick seasoned adventurers. In truth. In truth. Submit to my will, you brute! Under my control, 
You will become the perfect pawn. With a crown and everything, you're gonna so love this thing. The furry tail of Garbadoch the Coward. But our tail is far from bad. Alright, so there he comes. This is the boss. Once again, in solo, you really uh, don't need to worry too much about it. He summons some, some ads, but that's basically it. There is a hidden deed for the group version. And if I don't like, I might talk to you about that a little bit more. had reconsidered its chances of survival against our might. We let it go. After all, we'd been the ones pressed upon its own. We have been as much a victim of the armoring's meddling as we have been. So yeah, the rat escaped. So maybe at some point we'll get to meet that thing again. Or well face it ourselves, I should say. If that rat crosses our path, he is not going to be as lucky. But as I was saying, there is a hidden deed for the group version that we, of course, can't see in our deed lock until we complete that. Basically, there are some cleansing devices in here that you can use to clean some of the filth uh, that, that the rat will place upon you. And if you defeat the boss without using them, you get an extra deed. But once again, for the solo version, that... That's not the case. So there we go. We have completed the instance. Now we can leave. That was the tale of the Lair of Berman. It is good to hear Laxite honor your request. Maybe she will eventually recount these details on her own without needing reminders. In the meantime, Eavire and Borgach will do what they can while I keep an ear to the ground. Will you stay and hear of our troubles? I trust that the map helped. It is rudimentary to be sure, but useful as well. Without it, we might have been lost forever. A small smile cracks through Igrick's serious countenance. I jest, but returning home would have been more difficult. The map only displays a fraction of the full sewer system. It is my hope that we will complete it on the future expeditions. There is still much work to be done, after all. That we're, that we're talking about maps, you remind me. Yeah. This is Sakroth. Yeah, that, that helps you uh, visualize the thing a little bit more. So it seems uh, at some point... Sakroth is connected to the Poison Gardens and also connected to Thaudisgar. So yeah, it made sense then that we that we had Sakroth last. I mean, the the group of the Trev Dwarden had already cleared the place, opening the way for us to go to Sand Lore and going to Thaudisgar, and then we hear how they did that in the first place. Okay, very nice. Yeah, the map does help a lot. Stay and hear me out. Laxide actually mentioned the filth this time? Then I'm satisfied. I didn't mean to sound so harsh earlier, but she wields power with her words. Power that can be used for good. May her story remind the children to keep themselves healthy, for followers of the Iron Crown are not the only threat we face. Can somebody please think of the children? <laughs> yeah. And well, now that we're here, might as well complete the daily. Greetings. Awesome. What comes next, then? Thank you for indulging me, friend. I've told this tale numerous times already, but I don't think I'll ever grow tired of it. I would say that the story has come to a close, but the fate of our large rat friend remains shrouded in mystery. Mate finds a modicum of peace out on the wild, 
preferably far, far away from the Iron Crown. Thank you for indulging me, friend. I've told this tale numerous times already, but I don't think I'll ever grow tired of it. Watching people react with smiles and laughter is enough for me. After all, what's the harm in some light-hearted fun amid such dark days? Was I lying about the large rat? Well, Lagside gives you a wink. That for me to know and for you to guess. If you think it would help you form a decision, come back again for another retelling. Well, a rat eats more eh, plausible than a dragon. That is undeniable. Oh, shield tactics immunity duration. I mean, I I think right now on my sword I'm using a teal version of this tracer, but if you want to give me a gold one, well, I don't mind. Yeah, I might I might take it. Okay, but now that we have learned what happened at Sagrat, let's see what comes next with this storyline. Well, what did you make of that? It's quite a story, but I wouldn't put it past the Angram to sink so low. While you were listening to Laxite's tale, a woman of the Treff Duvardine named Finruth came to Vela Vark begging for shelter from the Iron Crown and rambling about something she called Vod Ryolan. It is of our language, but I have never heard it spoken. It means something akin to Oath Trolls, but as I said, I don't know what to make of it. As curious as I am to know more, she looked unwell. Perhaps her journey out of Corn Doom was not a pleasant one, my friend. Knowing what I do of that city, it wouldn't surprise me. Once I was able to get a word in, I asked her to take rest in the tent over there until you returned. Would you check on Finruth and see if she can explain what has happened? I will certainly to do so, but... First, let's see, we can grab some of the goodies, the, the recipe, of course. It's uh, really useful. The crafting materials, not as much, but also useful. The task items, the enhancement runes, yeah, that seems to be. Now, I wonder about this recipe. Fellowship tradable, but I don't see a timer in it. Okay, whatever. So, here we have Pin Ruth. The poor woman has just arrived. So let's see what she has to say. Please, hear me out. I swear, I do not mean to deceive you. This land has known too much sorrow. All right, so what do we... We got a couple things in here. We completed chapter two. Uh, we have completed the acquaintance with the stewards of the Iron Home. We have a new title. The honor is now level 52. Thanks to the Virtue XP, we have Lotro points. Let us check all that. All right. It's just a reputation for the sake of a reputation bar. I don't think there is anything gated from this reputation uh, but here we have the new title you must earn friend standing with them this is the one that we have completed the title five lotro points you have reached acquaintance status with the stewards of the iron home and that's basically it you must listen to me before it is too late this land has known too much sorrow and i fear that darker days lies ahead I spoke to Soltak and warned him that the Iron Crown means to make Bot Raylan of us all. He may not remember me, but I remember him. All among the Treff Duvardine know of Throstan, the Exile, and of the one who was called Avair. Oh, thank you, I needed that reminder. I will speak no more of her. Her deeds have not been forgotten to the Treff Galorg, and I doubt those of hers or Domongar Silk would find welcome here among them. Do you know what I mean by Bot Raylan, Southern? It means oath trolls in the tongue of my people, but it is worse than it sounds. The Trev Galorg taken captive by the Iron Crown were the first, and their minds are no longer their own. I thought that was the worst of it, but then they took some of us. It won't be long now until the rest are taken and changed. Finruth appears to be exhausted, and she slumps against the nearby crates. I didn't have time to gather many of my belongings when I fled Karndoom, and I am tired from the journey. Might I beg for a meal and some water? Sure. 
everyone needs a good meal and some water. Both in here, as you can see, the hearty meal, the water skin. If the Iron Crown is not stopped, we will all become Bodrylan, all thralls. Our tribes will mean nothing to us. You have my thanks, Sothrin. Finrut eats, perhaps more swiftly than you or she expected. In between bites of rape and potato, she speaks. I must admit, I doubted the rumors of the free folk of Ankmar had taken to welcoming the outcasts of the tribe to Vardyne. When I arrived, though, I saw others of my tribe here among you, and I knew that I had found shelter, at least for the moment. I have never been more grateful to have been proven wrong. Finrut pauses, setting the plate on the ground beside her. After a moment, her demeanor sharpens. Do you know why I have come? Why I would turn my back upon my people all of, all of a sudden? It is not that I have had a change of heart. The Trev Duvardine were victorious at Klukath and to govern Angmar in, is a right. I say to you that the Iron Crown means to cast us aside, and that those who lead the Trev Duvardine are all too eager to let them. I saw things, things that I was not meant to see when the Iron Crown traveled to Mount Gundavat. Beneath Turfuar, the Dreher Spire, I espied one of the lost Oatstones of legend, Taurasar. I saw what becomes of those who swear oaths upon it, whether they wish it or not. If the Iron Crown is not stopped, we will all become Bot Raylan, Oath Trolls. Our tribes will mean nothing to us. If you will listen, I will tell you everything I know. What say you? Listen to me, and I will tell you what I know of Taurisar. And the Bot Raylan. After the downfall of Mordereth, Angmar fell into disarray, and the Iron Crown all but abandoned Karndun. With our future now uncertain, tensions arose within the Trey of Duvradain, leading many to forsake their oaths, renounce their kin and tribesmen, and turn their blades upon the Iron Crown. In time, those of us who remained traveled into the east, under the shadow of Mount Gundabad and into that accursed tower Tur Furar, the Drear Spire. Talk to me, Pin Ruth. My tale begins at Balak Yaran, the Iron Pass. It was said that the reach of the Witch King of Angmar stretched into the east during his reign. There sat a fortress known as Agaldun, and the Angmarim meant to claim whatever secrets lay forgotten within it. Above the fortress, legend spoke of a broken spire piercing the sky. Tour 4, the Dreher Spire, and it was believed that powerful tools of sorcery might be found within it. All among the Angmarim had plans to find the power they sought. With a tool stolen from Barat Gularan, one among them thought to ascend to the now vacant throne of Angmar. The tool he wore was called Maltagar, the Fell Graver, and it was possessed of some unearthly magic. Whispers and visions of the dead came to all who drew too near to Maltagar, and its wickedness seemed to grow as if it were feeding upon us. It was born across Balakiran, and we of the Trev of Ardain followed the Iron Crown to Karbronach. When we arrived in Karbronach, I saw Tur Furar looming in the distance. Even then, I sensed something was amiss. But on we traveled to the gates of Agaldun. Finrut's tale continues at Agaldun. I thought we were gonna be at the gates, but that's okay. Oh, I didn't realize you could take a look at the witch gate from here. Nice. May I speak with you? We pressed on to Agaldun, and it seemed for a time that the Angarim of the Iron Crown meant to dwell within the old fortress. It had become like another Karndum, and I began to wonder why they were so intent on returning to Angmar at all. We had left our foes behind, had we not? But it was never enough for the Angmarim, and their work had to continue. As the days went by, even the most strong-willed of the Angmarim seemed uneasy in Tur Furak. Always they would explain it away. A trick of the mind, guilt, some old tool of the Witch King reaching out to the unseen.
It did little to comfort them, and even less to comfort us. But they insisted that soon, always soon, they would have what they needed to ensure Angmar's ascension. I never believed them. Until the day I followed High Priestess Asahal into the depths of Turfun. And then I understood. Root's tale continues in the depths of Turfuar. Beware the Iron Crown. In secret, the Iron Crown had sought for something far more powerful. Beneath Turfuar, a terrible artifact had laid nigh forgotten, but not to High Priestess Asahal. In her studies, she had learned many things of Angmar at the time of its downfall and of the Witch King's many evils that never came to light. Although nothing spoke so plainly of what she would find, I suspect she knew the nature of it, and she wanted it, that she might succeed where the Witch King of Angmar had failed. One of her ilk, Ruvaran, was the man who stole Maltagar and with it they meant to wrest the power of the Witch King into their own hands. Her work took her often into the depths of Turfuar, but none seemed to know where she labored. I decided that I would find out. The old stone of Rudon. Taurus, I heard her call it. There is something in that stone. Something ancient and horrible. Something beyond even the ken of the high priestess. I have seen what High Priestess Asahal has planned for us. All of us. Even a shard of Tarasar could bend all of Angmar to her will. Osiric, Lagord, High Priestess Asahal, and Brathor Krakel. So I have a lot of questions about this. But ah, and Urquan, yeah, Glafail, all the sorcerers that we fought when we were attacking the Dreher Spire, and here we have a Brathar and Klagord. So you would remember from the a, from the last time we were in the Dreher Spire when we confronted Klagord, when we defeated High Priestess Asahal. Brother seemed to be on our side, but he was also uh, looking for the Dreher Spire. But I have the question if uh, this flashback, well, I guess it, it happened before our own foray into the Dreher Spire, but I, I am trying to figure out how Brother fits in all this exactly. None of us will be spared. Not the Trev de Verdain, not even the rest of the Iron Crown. Because from from what I remember, yeah, Brother was lying to us, and he infiltrated the Dreher Spire looking for the Taudasar, looking for the stone for himself. Uh, he was discovered, and well, he was stopped. And even then, the the stone was not there. But if he knew that the stone was in the depths of Tour Four, why was he looking for it? Uh, on the high chamber. I haven't I haven't checked the 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 betas of the raid just yet. But of course this will be continued on the raid and and uh, it, it also seems very weird to me that High Priestess Asakal would only take a shard of the stone if she can take it all if if she has the entire stone uh at her reach. So well I, I think she would have taken the, the stone. But I guess we'll need to wait For to find that out. I would not allow myself to believe what I knew to be true. But 
When I saw we came the boat island, I... Pinroot buries her faces in her hands for a moment. And I'm ashamed that I did not abandon the tribe when the others did. I held hope that the Iron Crown might still deliver us to some better future, but I see now that I was a fool. You are a friend of the Trev Galoric, are you not? The Trev Duverdine were not always like this, despite what you might think. We are a strong people, and as we always have, we did what was necessary to preserve our tribe. But Clagward and Dalmangard before him have betrayed us to the Iron Crown for their own gain, to masters who care nothing for us. With that accursed shard, High Priestess Azakal will take everything from us. There will be no Trev Galorv, Trev Duvordine, or even the Iron Crown. Only the Bot Rayland and their terrible Witch Queen, and we won't even remember what we have lost. Before I left Corn Doom, I heard that Kranok was being kept in the Witch King's Tower. Gwathrenas, they call it. The chieftain of the Trev Galorg lives, but only barely, and I do not think the Iron Crown intended to free him. He has witnessed his people become Bot Rayland, and I think it is only some mercy or cruelty of High Chieftain Klagor that spared him from that fate. Perhaps he has become one of them by now, perhaps not. That is all I know, Sothran. I only hope that what I have told you can help to put an end to this before it is too late. And I hope that as well. A stone that can bend wolves. Such a thing was long considered a legend among the Trev Galor. But for it to truly exist... It's unthinkable. Alright, now here we have the option of choosing... Uh, the food. And, well, I, I of course, I'm gonna take the agility one, but... Well, I also have the... Uh... The recipe for the will... The will one, so that, that seems nice. If Finruth speaks true, Cranog may still live. But unless we destroy the shard of Tyrosar, the fight against the Iron Crown is lost. If Finruth speaks true, Cranog may still live. But unless we destroy the shard of Tyrosar, the fight against the Iron Crown is lost. Even the greatest victory might be undone if the Oatstone can be used against us. There is no other course. We must strike at the very heart of the Iron Crown in Karn Doom. The fate of our people and of Vangmar itself depends on us. Go and tell Nectan of what you have learned. When you are prepared, we shall set out to Gwathrenost. You need not ask, my friend. If there is any hope that Cranog still lives, I will not abandon him. What? Swear you do not deceive me. You tell Nectan that Cranog may still live within Gwathrenost. You need not ask, my friend. If there is any hope that Kranach still lives, I will not abandon him. If you go to Wathrenost, I will follow you. And now... When you are ready to make for the old citadel of the Witch King, the Trev Galorg will fight by your side. Now, we need to do the raid, but as of the time of recording this, the raid has still not released, and even if it had, that raid is better left for the next episode, so that will be the end of the next of this one, and it seems we are soon going to get some answers. How did High Priestess Azakal survive our encounter with her? Uh, what? How, how does Brathar fit in it at all? Maybe he's already out of the picture, and I'm just uh, not saying it. But once again, I mean, from what we saw of Brathar in Carve Ronak and what we have learned today, it seems that he still has some part to play in all this. We will also find out what happened to Kranok and all the other hillmen, but from what we have heard, it wouldn't surprise me if some of the enemies in the raid were the hillmen that have already been enthralled by Thaudesar. And the matter of Thaudesar as well, another Oatstone. So I have lost count of how many oat stones we have seen so far. Uh, we have seen the stone of Eric, that was one. Uh, the the stone of the, the stone that Lendelin slash Gandalf destroyed in the Second Age. Then the stone of Rune, I think it is. That was the one that Sauron had in Baratur that uh, we also destroyed during the Black Book of Mordor. And we have now Tauresar and. Another one that we have not gotten to 
but I think we will eventually is the Helkesar, the Ice Stone that is in Photo Hill. That is a quest line that we have not done yet. And I, once again, will do it at some point. I'm just trying to see if I can fit this into the main series or if I do it as a separate thing, but that will come later. But yeah, we it seems we are getting a hold of all these oat stones and maybe for Umbar we might find another one, who knows? But ever since they were introduced, the Lotro team is playing and is relying heavily on, on them, on, on the oat stones and the story possibilities that they provide. And that is all good. I mean, uh, as I told you before, I like the idea and I like how the devs took the poem of uh, the Return of the King and added a twist to it. So the Seven Stones were not the Palantiri, but the the Oat Stones, the Vandasari, and the Palantiri were the Seven Stars. That opens a lot of possibilities. The only gripe that I have with this idea uh, is the fact that Gandalf didn't know about them, had his memory shrouded, and that these stones had been long forgotten, but something as important as these, in my opinion at least, shouldn't be so easily forgotten, but that, that's also some of the themes of the Lord of the Rings, uh, things that fade into memory, uh, powerful things and beautiful things as well. So in, in that sense, it does work, but but it still seems a little bit off for me that as soon as we learn of the Vandasari in the Mordor Besiege storyline, we start learning about all of them. And then it seems that basically the only people who didn't know about them were, were on one hand, Gandalf and ourselves. Because uh, Elrond knew about them, Glorfindel knew about them. They were just hiding the truth from Gandalf uh, after what he endured in Barad-dûr. And here we have the Angerim who had also heard about them. When we go to look for the Hilkesar, you will see that there was some Arnorian soldiers that also knew about it. So I think there, there is still some polishing needed to all these Bandasari storylines that we have gotten. Once again, I... I, I enjoy the idea and what the devs have been doing with it. But some of the details, I, I still think need some work. But who knows, maybe next time with the raid, we'll get some more answers to all of this and to some of my gripes. That would be great if that were to happen. But well, in any way, we'll need to wait and see what happens. For the time being, though, this has been all on today's episode of Citadel Guard Adventures. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you on the next one. Until then, my friends, stay safe, take care, good luck to you all, and I will see you later.